Well, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon in this segment. Today, we're very fortunate uh, to have uh, Mr. Kabir Karim from the American Lung Association joining us and giving us very valuable information. And uh, we're just very fortunate that we're able to do it. Um, you know, uh, we've talked about using different platforms now with this uh, COVID-19 new norm. And I think this is one of them. Uh, Mr. Karim, we welcome you. Thank you so much for your time uh, this afternoon. And so uh, tell us a little bit about um, your position and what is it that you do with the American Lung Association? And of course, American Lung Association, which has been in existence uh, for quite some time and, and really mm -hmm. doing, making a huge impact in the community. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, let me give you an introduction to the American Lung Association first. Uh, we are, believe it or not, one of the oldest public health organizations in America. Uh, we kind of burst into the scene in the early 1900s, so over 100 years ago, and we were mm -hmm. tackling the tuberculosis epidemic at the time. And then after that, we just evolved into one after another, another health issue, another lung health issue, lung health issue, uh, until finally we just became pretty much the champions of lung health here in America. And, and simply put, our mission is uh, to uh, prevent lung disease and to improve the lives of people who already have lung disease. And we do that through our efforts in education, advocacy and uh, research. And my position here as a health specialist at, uh, for Texas region is basically I'm the guy involved with all programs related to tobacco, uh, lung cancer, and um, better breathers clubs for um, people who have lung disease. Correctly. And uh, yeah, like you said, it's been an organization that has been making an impact in society for for more than a decade already. And, uh, you know, I think we hear it um, often, but a lot of people don't uh, know or only associate American Lung Association with lung cancer, mm -hmm. right? And I'm sure there are so many other things that, that you all do. And, and you talked about research, right? And so if you tell us a little bit of, of the research and what other things are we talking about? You know, I know that maybe back in the 80s, tuberculosis, was uh, you know a big a big thing at least here in Brownsville. I remember because I had a family member who had to go through so many um, exams and everything. This is something that was going on during that time, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure that the American Lung Association deals with many other things. Yeah, that's 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 right. I mean, we have many members in our um, our work colleagues have had some kind of relationship with lung disease, either they had a family member die of uh, lung cancer or they had a family member have tuberculosis. Um, my, my myself, um, I had the yeah, family members who died of lung cancer. My father-in-law had uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and had to have a, a, a lung transplant. Um, but we, we are pretty wide scoping now. Um, our fi five main strategic priorities are to defeat lung cancer and to uh, be championing clean air for all, uh, improve the quality of life for those who already uh, have, lung can uh, have lung disease and create a tobacco vapory future. And one we just added onto our um, strategic plan was improving for future or preparing, sorry, for future flu pandemics. So we have a couple of um, signature programs in um, in our, our education and, and advocacy and research. And just to give you just a couple of them that I think are most um, relevant to your listeners, um, I would like to first begin with our Better Breathers Club, which is basically our support groups for those who are living with uh, lung disease. Uh, so if you are interested, you can join a club. There's several dotted around Texas. Um, I believe there's one uh, in Brownsville. I believe there is one. Mm -hmm. If not, we have to start one up. Right. Um, we also have our Freedom From Smoking program, which is our signature smoking cessation program for adults. And similarly, we have our uh, Not On Tobacco program, which is our 
a youth cessation program that's recently uh, we've revamped it to include much of the the vaping issues today. So um, that will be ready to launch uh, this fall. Uh, and we also have our smoke-free housing initiative. Of course, we have the, the new HUD rule that was uh, passed um, a couple of years ago to make all, uh, public housing, federal public housing smoke-free. And we were one of the, I think, main stakeholders to pass that law. And I've been working with uh, public housing to um, help them through their smoke-free journey to make their facilities more uh, friendly to their residents, given that it's very difficult, of course, to suddenly know that your building is, uh, your resident is going to be uh, smoke-free and you yourself are a smoker. So we try to help give um, some technical assistance to help with that. Um, and in general, um, to help multi-unit housing go smoke-free. So I'm working with some local initiatives to hopefully start something up here and at least starting with Dallas and maybe um, have some kind of uh, relationship to help all multi-unit uh, housing, whether private or public, to be smoke-free. Uh, we also have our uh, more advocacy type um, um, interventions such as a Save by the Scan campaign uh, just reminding people that if you're between 55 and 80 years old and have smoked a pack a day for 30 years or equivalent uh, and are a current smoker or have quit within the last 15 years, then you are at high risk of perhaps um, um, having lung cancer and you should have a scan immediately to see um, if you have lung cancer because the the symptoms for lung cancer usually come in stage three, the, the last stage of um, the disease, and by then it's it's too late to really do much. So it's very important that um, people do their scans if they are um, at high risk. Uh, so we try to campaign for that. Also, our national uh, lung helpline at 1-800-LUNG-USA, and uh, we also have our, our fundraising campaigns um, the lung uh, force uh, walk that we do every year for um, lung cancer research and our fight for air climb also we do do that every year at least one in dallas and one in houston of course with covid19 some of these have been disrupted but um, we do our best to do that and in terms of research there are a few um I mean, we fund research in, in all different levels, um, but um, I think the very two um, things that we have done recently is um, our funding for uh, one of our um, our colleagues. He's found the the key um, the key protein in COVID nineteen that is that will be hopefully be just one step closer to hopefully producing a vaccine one day. Wonderful. Um, so we, our, yeah, so our, our funded research, he, he found that and actually that was here in uh, Texas as well. Um, and also we have another um, a research, um, uh, funded research campaign, it's a very uh, long research um, study that will be conducted over a number of years. Um, it's a, it'll be a cohort following um, the, the lifestyles of many different um, individuals and seeing which is the, the best factors that can help with uh, helping with lung cancer and other lung diseases. So that's um, a first of its kind and we're, it's going to, I think, be a, a game changer in terms of our fight for, for lung disease. Wonderful. Well, we know that American Lung Association is on top of the game. You know, we're, we're glad to hear these we're news. Trying our best, yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, there, there's just so many things going on, right? And, and, and just being able to say, you know, we're doing research and we're, we're trying to, to get uh, the, the help, right, that is needed. It, it's wonderful to know. So uh, just to let you know that the initiative uh, and these housing authority, the city of Brownsville has begun the initiative of smoke free units so those are things that we we started as you know we've uh last met with one of the presentations that you that you given so that's something that we are working with our residents uh you also mentioned the uh, 1-800-LUNG-USA 
And so this is a, a phone number that is available for the community to call. And we're wondering what kind of questions can we ask there? Is it just for referrals or is it just a, you know, specific things that, that are dealt with when you make that phone call? Pretty much any question you have related to lung disease, you can call that number. Pretty much any question. Um, referrals is, is a little bit, um, will be a little bit difficult. Usually those, th those kinds of things are then referred to me and then I will give the referral. But, um, but in general, yeah, any question on lung disease, any question on how to quit um, um, your smoking habits or vaping habits, um, so in, in much the same way, it's pretty similar to the state quit line, but uh, with some slight differences. Um, one of them being you can just call as, as many times you want. And it's not even uh, it's not even an issue. Um, we don't give out free medication or anything like that, like the, the quit line does. But um, our uh, uh, our people that are working there, they're all the differences. They're all healthcare professionals with a professional degree, usually in uh, pulmonology or, or, in, or in that department. They they're very specialised in lung health. So that's kind of one of the unique th things about our helpline. Any question on COVID-19, you can ask them. Yeah. Uh, anything um, uh, related to American Lung, any of our programs, uh, people want trainings from us, they can. They usually call the helpline first and it's then the question refers to me and I can answer them. So um, anything like that. And if you want to volunteer, that's probably the best way to go through is, is um, give your your information to the helpline and we'll contact you. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, one question that, that we had and we're wondering if you can answer for us. Uh, is there any threats in, the, are there any threats in the quality of the current air? And if so, what are they? Yeah, so um, every year we do a state of the air report and um, you can even Google it and it's in PDF form. Um, our publication this year for 2020. I mean, it was looking at the data uh, last year, but uh, in general, the trends are not looking good. Um, overall, overall um, most of our air is getting worse. There are some cities that are doing a better job. Um, sometimes no, out of no uh, intervention of their own, maybe it was the weather or something like that that would um, mean that the pollution is a little less, more rain that year or something like that. Um, I think it's a pertinent question for Brownsville especially because um, you're ranked, uh, I think, the 25th worst city in America for, um, for pollution. Uh, not, not as bad as some places, some other places in, te in uh, Texas, not as bad as Houston, not as bad as uh, McAllen, your neighbors there, so you're not the worst, but um, and in fact for um, ozone, uh, pollution, you're actually one of the best okay. in the nation. Good. But, uh, yeah, in, in general, the, the trend is though, is that things are not getting worse and things aren't getting better. I mean, we're not Mexico City bad, mm -hmm. at this point, but uh, I mean, that's one of the most polluted cities in the world. But um, in general, um, I would say um, the the trend is isn't looking particularly good, and, and even especially Brownsville, you're 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 up there. But just as much as um, outdoor pollutants are are something to be, especially if you have lung disease of some kind, asthma or, or, or something like that. Um, indoor pollutants are are just as are just as bad. On top of that list, right. at the time at least was was um, um, secondhand smoke. And that's why we were one of the major stakeholders and backers of this new HUD rule was because secondhand smoke kills over 42,000 people a year. And most of that happens inside the house and especially susceptible was multi-unit public housing where you're all together, you're scrunched up, the smoke goes through the walls, goes through the sockets, goes you know to the neighbors, goes to the corridors. So it was really important that we felt that it was uh, that law that law was passed, and um, it was just kind of cleaning up the the um, the complicated uh, issues after that 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 needed to be taken care of. And um, but uh, yeah, in general, we should keep in mind that whilst outdoor it's bad, indoor 
is where we spend a lot of <laughs> half our day, if not more, especially now with COVID-19. And uh, we should really try to not be um, to be smoking most of all in our in our in our residence. Right, right. Um, you may point to 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 vaping. Is, is that how you say vaping? Vaping. Um, yeah. Yes. And we see a lot of young people not taking the, the seriousness of the harm, you know, that they're causing other bodies. Is it is it worse to to do that or to smoke? Okay, <laughs> this is a. Um, it's, it's not. You may think it's a simple question, but it's it's not a straightforward answer. And actually, really, it's it's not even the right question to ask because, really, our you know uh, our air is. We have a right to clean air. Mm -hmm. We have a right to be breathing, um, and we um, and clean air. And we have really to protect our children. And um, the tobacco industry is there to exploit. Our youth. It has. We've know it. We known for decades. That's the case from internal documents, and this is this is kind of what they do. And this is and the electronic cigarette or um, uh, that they. It's just another evolution of the tobacco product to hook um, people on nicotine. And the younger they can hook them, the the better. And this is just a long line of this, the same the same old message, really. So it's just such a bigger I issue. If, you, if it was to say, um, if we converted to just vaping and not do any um, cigarette tobacco smoking, technically speaking, it, it, you could say it, it's on, on balance better, but it's just so much more complicated than that the amount of um, especially the amount of nicotine that's in a lot of these uh, vaping devices, they're really far too high. And now you've got these pods where you can kind of customize. So even the kids themselves can put even more nicotine in those uh, products. You also have, um, uh, you, you also have the fact that um, a vaping is, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm losing my trend of thought here for a second. Yes, you also have the complicacy of of poverty as well. So cigarettes are still cheaper than um, electronic cigarettes mm -hmm. and vaping, and so it tends to be a gateway drug to cigarettes, which give you which are cheaper and give you a quicker and more powerful hit as well of nicotine still. So it's an allure to just go on to just transition over to cigarettes, and that's that's tending what we would to see in the data we see that so it, it's i hope to answer that question it's not yeah. a simple answer it's a yeah, very I realize, yeah i realize it's not a simple question but um and i've heard it because you know we have we have friends and we talk and and it's always the the answer from a young person that might be baby yeah. it's not as bad as smoking you know that's usually some of the answers you know when you're trying to encourage them not to uh, the answer is usually what's not as bad as smoking, you know, so uh, just kind of throwing it out there so that, you know, people realize that it is going into your system. It's going to your lungs. Right. And even yeah. will have some impact. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I would I would definitely check out our website um, that gives you more information, especially if you're a parent wants to talk to your child about this. Um, you can go to uh, lung.org. Um, forward slash uh, the vape talk and um, you can get a, a, like a downloadable PDF how to strike a conversation with um, uh, with uh, your child about vaping and uh, some of the the gives you information about it too so I would definitely check that out yes well thank you so much for that information so you talked also about calling the 800 lung usa if uh anyone was interested in volunteering or being involved with the american lung association um and you also talked about the web page which we'll have available um in this uh in this broadcast so uh anything else that you would like to share with us uh today and we're very very fortunate that you've taken this time and giving us this valuable information. Well, thank you for having me again and letting me uh, voice our 
our mission and our goals here at American Lung Association. Uh, just check out our, we our website at uh, www.lung.org. And uh, we have in Texas our virtual uh, Lung Force Walk coming up in August. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, just if you need to contact me, I'm, I'm also here and available. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for this afternoon. It was wonderful to, to talk to you. And of course, this would be hopefully the first of many. And I know that we ourselves are committed uh, and we want to be involved and help uh, with all the initiatives at the American Lung Association. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Right. Can we go back? Yes, sir.